This week we're in northern Peru, in one of the best places in the world to see the real life Paddington Bear. Also ahead. We're off in search of enlightenment in one of Asia's craziest cities. Oh, I gave him two. And we're trying to find the answer to this. So how much better do I have to be to go to Ukulele Wednesday? We start this week in Peru. It's a country best known for the famous ruins Machu Picchu. But we've come to the foothills of the Andes, to Chaparí, some 2,000 kilometers northeast of that, where there's another, hairier icon, the inspiration for Paddington Bear. The Andean bear is the only native bear species to South America. It's on the endangered list because of hunting and habitat loss. But here, in the Chaparí area, they're doing something about it. This is Peru's first private conservation area, set up jointly with the local community in 2000. It tries to rehabilitate rescued bears that have been captured illegally and mistreated as exotic pets or circus attractions. We have them here in these enclosures, so they get used to the, the fruits and dangers. Most animals kept in captivity are unlikely to survive in the wild, but here they're doing all they can to change that. When bears are born here, they learn the things that they can eat and the things that they can't eat. These bears are good uh, candidates to be released. There are eight bears here now, and so far, they've only successfully released one. That's how tough it is. It's like my dream job, really. I grew up here, and since uh, I remember, I was sure that I, I want to, to stay here and, and work with these bears. <laughs> We're going to feed the bears. Tell me how it's done. Yes, uh, here we use this, we call it here waraka. Waraka. Uh, Looks like a slingshot. Yes, it's a slingshot. We threw the sweet potatoes all around the place, so we keep them busy all the time looking for food. The bears are encouraged to forage just like they would in the wild. You want to try? Have a try? Okay. So this one goes on the index finger? Index okay. Finger. Right. You get a sweet potato. They like sweet potatoes. So what do I do now? Swing it, and at some point, <laughs> when you think it's the right moment, release the, this part of it. All right, here goes. You ready? <laughs> it didn't go very far, just there. It was easy, see? Giving it to you on a plate. Naturally shy, these are amongst the smallest and least aggressive of the bear species. So some say this is the best place in the world to see the Andean bear. Now I've been to other bear conservation projects and never been able to get this close. I'm just a matter of meters away. It's quite humbling. But the thing I find most fascinating is how their mannerisms are so human-like. They're an obvious draw for tourists and entry fees are used for community projects and for research. It's estimated that the bear population numbers have declined by 20% in the last few decades. So this is what conservation is all about here, releasing a bear back into the wild. And I'm lucky enough to be able to watch it happen. Four-year-old Elisa was born in this reserve. So this is Elisa's mother next door? Yes. Her mother, Azulina, was rescued from captivity, where she'd been kept as a house pet. Sadly, she would never survive in the outside world. We're gonna sedate uh, Elisa. Okay. And we're gonna set up a, a collar. GPS collar on her. 
The GPS collar will now allow Juan to track Elisa when she's released. We're gonna charge the, the dart. Juan prepares a tranquilizer that he'll shoot into Elisa's muscles. How dangerous is this, Juan? Uh, dangerous for, for her is, uh, yeah, so each time that you use a tranquilizer on an animal, it could be dangerous for this animal. But this is a safe drug, and uh, we know that she didn't eat anything in the last hours, so okay. I think everything going to be okay. His shot hits the spot, and Eliza seems confused. Finally, Elisa is sedated. Now we're going to uh, test uh, okay. the collar on her. Put the collar on, see if it fits. Uh -huh. It's a race against the clock before the bear wakes up. Okay, so is that the job done? So what now? We, we shut the door and then... Wait until tomorrow, and tomorrow we're going to release her. OK. So it's a beautiful morning, and today's the day we're going to release Elisa into the wild. I'm super excited. Hi, Juan. How's Elisa doing? Uh, she's fine. Uh, she's getting used to the collar now, so she's scratching a bit. But uh, now that we're going to release her, uh, she's going to have a lot of things uh, to think about, and she's going to forget the collar. Do you think she knows what's going on? Mm, no, I think she has no idea, but in a few minutes, she's going to realize it. <laughs> this is a first for Elisa, and for me too. I've been given the privilege of opening the gate for Elisa. So I pull the string here like this, and then push the gate. OK. So we're now all in the same open space. So I'm just going to stand back. Oh, here she comes, here she comes. OK, this is it. But Elisa is hesitant. She doesn't want to leave her mother. She's looking very cautious at the moment. So they've put an egg just outside the gate there. Finally, Juan and his team entice Elisa out of the cage with some food, and she takes her first steps towards freedom. It's incredible to be so close to a bear. There's no gate, there's no fence separating us. She's just there, a few metres away. It looks like she's enjoying her first wild fruit, which is a good sign. I think she just realised that she is in the wild. <laughs> From here on, Elisa faces an uncertain future, but the GPS collar will track her whereabouts so Juan and his team can see how she adapts to life in the wild. She's going to explore everything now. For Juan, it's the culmination of years of work. I'm very happy for her. Since she was born, we were waiting for this moment. What an experience. Imagine to be able to tell people that I was so close to a bear and we helped release a bear into the wild. Oh, quite emotional, actually. If that's inspired you to see some other conservation projects on your next trip, then here are some of our top tips. If you're heading to Sri Lanka, you'll find some of the world's most ancient creatures, sea turtles. Five out of the seven breeds around the globe are found on the island, and you can go to the hatcheries to see them in all stages of their development. Turtle tourism has reduced the number of egg poaching instances, and there are even volunteering options available for those who want to stay longer. At the Nom Tamal Wildlife Rescue Centre in Cambodia, 
Injured animals of all shapes and sizes are taken to be rehabilitated. Illegal logging, poaching and animal trafficking have all contributed to these animals being hurt or displaced. A tour of the centre will allow you to interact with the wildlife and see how these rescued creatures are being cared for up close. If you're looking for a conservation experience in Kenya, you'll be spoilt for choice. We recommend heading to Amboseli National Park to encounter its large population of elephants. The park has 52 elephant families, which have been protected since 1972 by a trust set up to prevent poaching. The local people also play a part in conservation efforts, and if you're lucky, you may even spot some baby elephants. And finally, Taronga Zoo in Sydney houses several different species that have been rescued from around the world. The zoo even has a free app that you can download to your smartphone, which encourages you to be active with conservation by reporting suspected illegal animal activity around the world. Still to come on the program, We'll be finding out why this instrument from the past is making a comeback. It feels like a community almost, as corny as that might sound. Nice to meet you. And from monks to monsoons, we took your advice on the best things to do in Bangkok. Does it make sense? Make any sense? No? The Travel Show, your essential guide wherever you're heading. Next up, it's over to you. We've been all over Twitter, Facebook and Instagram asking you for your favourite things to do in six different locations worldwide. We've had a great response. So in the first of this series, our trip star Ben Zan's been following your suggestions all the way to one of Southeast Asia's maddest cities. Stop number one for many backpackers is the Thai capital, Bangkok. It's a crazy city full of adventure. That's all part of its appeal. As you can probably tell, Bangkok is the definition of pure torrent chaos. There's only one way to break through all of that. Right, it's using my little friend, the trusty smartphone. I'll see if you can get me away from the madness and make my trip a far richer experience. This is Bangkok. Who knew Bangkok looked like this? An early start and the first tweet gets me straight out of the crowds and onto the water. Look, everyone's waving at me. This is the grandest entrance I've ever made. Nice to meet you. I'm here for a special weekly ritual involving Buddhist monks, but I know it'll be an etiquette minefield, so I've lined up some help. You want to walk behind me? Okay. The custom is you walk like half a step behind. Okay. Yeah, so tell me exactly what happens here. The monks come along in uh, small boats and the lay people line up here on both sides of the bank and then you put food and other things into the monks' bowls. There is a connection between what you give and the karma that you get back. So when they come by, you just put this into the bowl and I'll take care of it from there. There we go. Gotta make sure I get it in this bowl. Not sure when I make the move. Maybe now. Oh, 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 sorry. Oh, I gave him two. Oh, okay, okay, sorry. I got a bit over keen. It's a very slow process, there we go. Feels good, it was fun. It's a beautiful way to start the day, I think. I feel a lot calmer. Oh, nice. All right, time to cook with poo. This is um, nicer than I thought it would be, I'll be honest. I think this is the place. She looks like she's in the middle of doing a hello. She's happy to see me also. And when you're cooking, the water is boiled. chicken. Kun, or poo, as they call her here, set up this little school as a way to escape the long, relentless hours she was working. Is this enough lemongrass? It is. Selling food outside her home. Tell me what it was like when you first started out. Not easy for me. I know, understand English. I tell my friend before, oh, I can't do this. Fry pan or everything, I do cheaper. And the Thai food first time when I start cooking school, not beautiful, really sticky, <laughs> really hot. Because no air fun. Very small. Very small, yeah. 
Okay, here we go. I made this all myself, kind of. Ooh, looking good, looking good. Okay. Mm, that's good. Thai food is so fresh. Mmm, <coughs> 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 too spicy. <coughs> Yum. <coughs> <coughs> My final stop in Bangkok, a vast complex in which surely I can find a nice Thai gift for my mum. However, this is monsoon season, so half of it is shut. When the weather's like this, you don't see many tourists here, which is great, but it does mean communication is a bit more tricky. Here we go, 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 here we go. Listen, listen, listen. Does it make sense? Make any sense? No? I'll ask this lady. Excuse me. Can I ask you a question? Here you go, here you go, here you go. It's gonna happen, it's gonna happen. No, she's giving me a little weird look. Oh, I feel like such a creep. You can speak English. Oh, you speak English. I want to buy a present for my mother. I don't know. A nice present that says Thailand. I love you, many things. The next market is half rainy, but now it's raining. It's raining, so it's all closed. <laughs> this looks as not as enjoyable as it actually is. And just as my task looked completely impossible, a breakthrough. <laughs> I think I have found a gift for my mom. Can I get this one? This lady here. Social media can do a lot of things. It can help you find the perfect gift for your mom. It can help you cook in a slum with poo, but it definitely cannot stop the rain. And finally this week, a London challenge. Finding an affordable night out in one of the world's most expensive cities. Not easy, but we sent Lindsay Woods out to give it a go. And this is what she came back with. A Wednesday evening in central London, and what I've been told is a great night out. People down in the basement of a pub playing what I thought was an old instrument, the ukulele. So this is Ukulele Wednesday. It's people of all ages, it has the power to bring people of all backgrounds together. When I first came, I knew how to drink beer. And so the first few weeks, all, all I did was play C whenever I saw it, and that's it. I'm definitely going to need some lessons. Lorraine Bell organizes the weekly ukulele get-together. Let's see what she can teach me. Now, I don't have to be that good for Ukulele Wednesday, do I? No. Okay, so where do I get started? So we're going to start with the A minor chord. Okay. So you're going to pop your middle finger just to the Five. top there. And we'll do eight down ups on this okay. just to get us going. And then we're going to do eight Cs. Okay. Put your third finger there. One, two. Uh oh. You've got really good rhythm. You've got an really? ear fit. Yeah, yeah, really good. Oh. Picking up the basics of the ukulele is actually pretty easy. Four strings, four fingers, and strum. And it's cheap too. Mine costs about the same as going out for a couple of pizzas and a bottle of wine. After an hour, I'm beginning to get the hang of it. I started to play in 2007. I gave up smoking and then replaced one habit with another. Wow. So, yeah. So how much better do I have to be to go to Ukulele Wednesday? You can come next week if you practice all the chords I've shown you. Going down. One great thing about learning the ukulele is that it's so small you can practice just about anywhere. Mm -hmm. 
So after a few days strumming, it's time to put it to the test, back in the basement of that pub. I'll admit, it's way more fun than I expected. There's a real joy to playing music with other people. And nobody minds if you don't quite know all the chords. It feels like a community almost, as corny as that might sound, but it's nice. You come in and people aren't judging you for how good you are, even though there's some like amazing people. Everyone's really lovely, and it's a really good bunch, and I feel like maybe it invites a certain type of person, and they're nice and they're friendly. There are three ukulele Wednesdays around London and plenty of ukulele festivals. And when I return home to California, I'm tempted to look out for something like this back in LA. Sadly, that's all we've got time for in this week's show. I hope you can join us next week when... Rajans in Botswana, exploring the ancient and modern on the eve of the Southern African nation's 50th anniversary of independence. I can't read music. Hopefully they know what's going to happen next. Join us for that if you can. And don't forget, if you want to follow the rest of the team on their journeys in real time, you can sign up to our social media feeds. All the details are on your screen now. But until next time from me, Carmen Roberts, and the rest of the Travel Show team here in Chaparri in northern Peru, it's goodbye.